Jeff, physics can tell us how the physical world works at its most fundamental level. But can physics tell us what ultimate reality is? Hmm. Uh, a really big question. <laughs> Not quite the biggest, but mm. getting there. Um, well, the, the short answer is no. Mm. I mean, uh, for all kinds of profound philosophical reasons. I mean, I think uh, one thing that modern physics has taught us is that uh, that enterprise may never really be complete. Can we completely know everything about the nature of reality? Nevertheless, there's uh, really exciting things uh, happening, um, which give us a lot bigger clues. Uh, maybe we're still a long ways away from that frontier of knowledge, you know, beyond which we cannot pass. Um, but uh, there's very interesting things that are happening. Um, well, do you believe that? Some physicists say that you, the, the bottom can never, may not exist, and you can always have more and more fundamental laws. That, to mm -hmm. me, does not sound logical. To me, that there is, at some level, I don't know when we'll ever reach it, or ever we can, but there is an ultimate reality of the physical world. But is it something that's knowable by our mind, by our experimental uh, uh, setup? No, but some would claim that, 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 in principle, you can go almost infinitely deep, and there's always laws beneath that. But then it becomes a question of what is, you know, to do science on it, we have to be able to test it. We have to be able to do experiments. We can come up with all the theories we want, but if the theories don't meet, make predictions which can be proven in real experiments, then what do you do? Sure. We can, we're just speculation. And uh, <clears throat> it looks like we're getting, you know, we, we know some of the right. limits of knowledge. We know some of the limits of doing basic, uh, basic experiments. Nevertheless, uh, there have been some really exciting uh, developments which change profoundly the current understanding of what is at least deep reality. I wouldn't know if I would call it the ultimate nature mm -hmm. of reality, most, most likely not. But it really changes in a, in a fundamental way what you mean by deep reality. Uh, so the, one of the big paradoxes uh, which has formed our modern uh, conception of reality is the fact that in quantum mechanics, if we're trying to get good information about uh, the property of some system, Suppose there's an electron, and we want to find its position, and we're shining photons off of it. We have a microscope, um, which the photon comes back so that we can uh, uh, try to see its position. It turns out if we're trying to get better and better precision on where that electron is, you have to use photons that wiggle more and more quickly, have a higher and higher frequency. But quantum mechanics also tells us that if you have a higher and higher frequency, it means it has more energy, more momentum, momentum. And so when that photon goes in to try to look at electronic, it, you know, it creams it, it kicks it. And so, and it kicks it in a random way. So you, it goes left, it may go left, it may go right. You don't have any idea what was its real state beforehand after you hit it with a sledgehammer. And so that was sort of the, uh, uh, a limitation, a fundamental limitation, which has um, stayed with us throughout all modern times. The kind of deep reality that was attributed to the situation was perhaps best uh, said by Niels Bohr. Um, for him, the notion of complementarity was a deep reality. You can know so much about one property of nature, but then you lose complete information about the other property of nature. And so if you asked about reality, um, actually one of, the, his, uh, one of the great icons that had so many discussions with Niels Bohr was John Wheeler. And uh, he beautifully uh, expressed the kind of uh, worldview. Uh, he called it the great smoky dragon. Um, when you do a measurement, a good measurement, you get results. That's sort of like the feet of the dragon. And do another measurement later in time, that's like the mouth of the dragon. And those are definite. Those are good measurements. But in between, it's like smoke. You just don't know what to say. And Bohr said, not only can you, you shouldn't even ask the question. You can't know in principle. And so that was the whole way of thinking about the deep reality. It turns out that, though it's true, it is true that when you do good measurements, you disturb the thing that you're looking at, and therefore you randomize it in a sense. It turns out there is another way of approaching the whole situation, which uh, makes that false. And it turns out we were able to prove that there is a very interesting new limit 
uh, to measurement theory. And it turns out if you do very gentle measurements, usually this means you don't get a lot of information out of it. But we were able to show that the rate by which you get information, you get information more quickly than you disturb it. So as a limiting process, the old kind of way of thinking about it, that, which was given by the phrase, you can't get information without disturbing the system, that turns out to be false. So it suggests that there's a kind of deep reality going on when you do gentle measurements. In order to fully flesh out that reality, you have to consider um, very rich new structures in time. For example, when you're doing gentle measurements, you have to consider its past, the way you prepared the system, but you also have to consider its future. This is a very surprising kind of result. If you look at the properties which pop up out of the woodwork, um, it's given by both its, its past and its future, in a sense, on, a, on an equal footing. So that's a, a big progress in the question of deep reality. And do you think that is real? Do you think that equivalent between the future influencing the present and the past influencing the present, which is the more obvious uh, and more traditional way, uh, is, is a deep characteristic of what ultimate reality is? I do. Um, Though, again, it's, it's not, it's still the beginning of the story, in a sense. Um, uh, so in this, from that perspective, one could, one gets new insight. One could say that there's a kind of the reality at a quantum mechanical level, when you look at it in a very gentle way and you consider these richer structures in time, it's kind of like a fluid, you know, mm. a very strange fluid, because it's composed of, of properties which seem impossible. But then there's various other aspects of uh, the quantum reality that the group around Aharonov has been uh, discovering, particularly in the issue of non-locality. And this is new kinds of non-locality in both space and time. So in a sense, we have this very strange kind of fluid, which only shows up if you have a lot of particles. Um, uh, it's, and it's, it's connected with the past and the future in very interesting ways. And then on top of that, you have this new kind of non-locality. Uh, uh, particle over here can interact with a particle over there, even though, in a sense, nothing, there was no force that went between them. And that distance can be? Arbitrarily large. Infinitely large. Infinitely large. But it's interesting in all these situations, uh, especially when you start talking about action at a distance, you might think that you could use that to send signals faster than light, or also the fact that these kinds of uh, non-locality also occurs in time in incredibly rich ways. You might think that you could send information backwards in time, which would violate causality. But amazingly, in these seemingly even very different aspects of quantum mechanics, they seem disconnected in a way. Nevertheless, as hard as you try, you can never violate causality. Mm -hmm. The uncertainty, the playing of dice of quantum mechanics is exactly the right kind to protect uh, from ever having a situation where you can uh, you could violate causality. So that would tend to indicate that whatever ultimate reality is, there's a deep coherence to these fundamental concepts that work through these, uh, what we had before thought was uh, capricious ways that things were happening. So quantum mechanics was uncertain and probabilistic. Well, maybe that's just the way it is. But you're saying that there's some deep principles operating that, that form the the, the bedrock of ultimate reality. Absolutely. That and quantum mechanics is an expression of. I, absolutely, I agree. And they're incredibly profound principles and have many other implications on the question of the deep nature of reality. Um, the fact that you know, we have this incredibly rich non-locality, we have these incredibly rich structures in time, the future being relevant to the present, it impacts all kinds of other dialogues, the relationship to, between parts and wholes and so on and so forth. So it's really, I'd say we're just at the beginning of the story. I don't know if we'll ever get there, but it, it certainly is incredibly exciting.